Hello everybody, this is Tim again. I recently got done watching the uh, first Halloween, the original Halloween, not the, well, not the Rob Zombie one. <laughs> it's funny nowadays that you gotta say original just to clarify that shit, because every fucking movie's been remade, or at least every horror film has anyway. But, um, to jump into this film here, this film is a great, it's a great horror film, or a great slasher film, whichever one you prefer to call it. Um, it's the best horror film I've reviewed so far, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original taking a strong second place but this is a great movie a great horror film or slasher film like i said whatever the fuck you want to call it uh but this is a terrific film it's directed by john carpenter he's directed a lot of films i like uh big trouble in little china the his remade version of the thing or remake uh, if you want to call it um um fucking escape from new york which i liked he's but uh, he's had some not it's kind of mediocre ones too, like the Ward and Ghosts of Mars, which I don't care too much for out of one of those. But most of his uh, filmography is nothing but fucking great shit. So <laughs> he's probably one of my favorite horror directors and favorite directors in general. But to jump straight into this movie here, it's a fantastic film. Uh, it's got a great like urban legend style vibe to it, like a real creepy holiday themed urban legend vibe, kind of like the Babysitter, Home Alone. And uh, she like gets creepy phone calls and some stalkers coming after her. It has a great vibe like that. I really don't even think there needed to be a sequel to this movie. This movie ends perfectly. There really was no need for a sequel to this movie. I guess the popularity of this film had to give it a sequel. But there's really no need for a sequel to this movie. But either way, just to jump into the first room here, uh, I mean the first film here, you got a great uh, POV shot at the beginning, and we don't know who the killer is, and he goes up to this girl's room after her boyfriend leaves she gets stabbed all the fuck but we hear her say michael when she's getting stabbed all the shit so we think well she must know who this guy is uh he walks back outside still the pov and then uh, all at once like the parents show up and they take his man they take his clown mask off and it's little michael myers <laughs> um but well this movie is really good but it does it does it's not no film is perfect uh every film has little things wrong with it and there's some little things here wrong with this movie too um, like, uh, the shot here that you get when the parents find their son basically with a knife in his hand with blood on it, they just kind of like, Michael, what? And uh, the mom just like casually sticks her hands in her pockets and the camera zooms out. I mean, it's, it's filmed great, but just the way the parents react, I'm like a little unrealistic. I mean, honestly, if your sick kid walked outside with a fucking bloody butcher knife, I think you'd be like, oh shit, more than you'd just be like, Michael, huh? <laughs> But it's fine. Like I said, those are just tiny little nitpicks and otherwise terrific film. Um, the only other nitpick I have in this movie is the dialogue for one character, Linda, uh, who's a friend, who's a, one of Jamie Lee Curtis's friends in this movie. Her dialogue is fucking annoying as shit. Uh, she keeps saying totally all the time, every five seconds, totally this, totally that. That's totally great or whatever and i'm like fucking oh gosh just kill this killer already please die I, I literally clapped when she died because her dialogue was fucking horrible because all she said was totally over and over the rest of the dialogue for all the other characters is great so i'm like what the fuck what's the deal with the the totally girl here but whatever one shitty dialogue character doesn't doesn't hurt the film for me but um Jump to the movie here, so it's a couple of years later. Um, well, actually, it's a few years later. Michael Myers has been in an asylum ever since. So you get Donald Pleasance here playing Sam Loomis. Uh, I prefer this version of Sam Loomis much better than the one from the Rob Zombie films. Uh, he doesn't want Michael Myers to get out. He's he was his doctor when uh, well, he was his doctor, and he used to treat him at the hospital or the asylum, and um. Uh, Try to take care of him, or tried to get it. Well, tried to help him, but then when he realized that the, there's nothing he could do for him, he decided fuck it and keep him locked up. Because, as we'll find out later in the movie, he had the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. <laughs> he delivers a lot better than I can, than I, I can whatsoever. But uh, Don Pleasance is great in the movie. I'm almost, I'm a little disappointed he didn't get more to do because I liked him. I was more interested in him and his relationship with Michael Myers than I was Jamie Lee Curtis's. But uh, he's in it for. The right amount, I think. I just, you know, wanted more of him. But I get that in the sequel, so <laughs> it doesn't bother me too much. But anyway, so he's arriving there with a, a nurse, I believe. And they're going to take him in front of a judge so he can stand trial. Now that he's, I, I think he's 21, I believe now. 
so they arrive there to pick him up and to transport him. Uh, but uh, all the patients are like walking outside in the rain. Like I said, this movie is this movie is much more of a suspense film for the first at least two acts, maybe even the third act, at least up until the final. Uh, it's all a big build up to the final, and the suspense in this movie is fantastic. It's fucking amazing. The suspense and the the jumps in this movie are what make it. The suspense is so good in this movie, and Michael Myers is played as like such a creepy character. Like he seems inhuman, especially with his mask, and he's just like in the shadows, and it's filmed so well, and you can only see like the, his mask a little like barely in the shadows because it's so white and it shines a little bit in the dark, and you're just looking at him, and he's just like stalking people through the movie in like very suspenseful ways. And you're like, oh shit, what's he gonna do? But it's, this movie is just creepy, just when like Michael Myers is fucking just standing in the background. So <laughs> that's what I love about this movie, that and the really urban legend. Um, story vibe to it like with the babysitter home alone on a halloween day and the setting of this movie looks great this definitely feels like it was sh uh, shot on fucking actual halloween <laughs> like the look with the leaves and everything it looks like halloween um but uh so they arrive there to transport michael myers all the patients are out everywhere uh michael myers fucking steals the vehicle and takes off it's never really explained how he drives or how he knew how to drive but that's that doesn't bother me i don't give a fuck about that really to be honest um so he takes off in the vehicle. He goes back to Hattonfield, Illinois, which is the town that uh, he's from. He uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is there. Her character is Lori Strode. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom was Janet Lee, who is in Psycho, which is, I believe, how she got the role for this, or at least probably how she got the role. Uh, acting wise, Jamie Lee Curtis and um, Donald Pleasance are the two standouts in this movie. They're the best actors in this film. Uh, well, the guy who plays Sheriff Braggett, he he's he's fine. But uh, the other characters, so Jamie Lee Curtis's friends, um, Annie uh, and Linda, they're both they're both just they're both good actors. I mean, there's, well, uh, Annie, the girl that plays Annie is is decent, and the girl that plays Linda is okay, but she's so fucking annoying with her dialogue that I hated her anyway. <laughs> but uh, Don Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis are the standouts, and that's all. That's all. I mean, that's enough. I mean, their characters are the most likable, so. I mean, it's an, it doesn't matter to me that the rest of the actors are just decent because, I mean, Don Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis' characters are the only ones that really need to be the standouts because they're the two most important characters. But, um, so Michael Myers heads back to Hattonfield. He, like, he's fucking driving around and stalking Jamie Lee Curtis. You don't know why, which I like. It's, like, no motivation. It's just, it could just be that he just saw this girl and just uh, randomly fixated on her and just wanted to follow her around, which I'm fine with. It adds more mystique to the character of Michael Myers or the shape, whichever you prefer to call him. And it works fine, a lot better than the motivation they give him later in the sequels where he's just killing random family members. Uh, <laughs> but um, I like that about the character. I wish they would have kept that with him just like maybe hunting after a different random person in each movie with no real motivation. Just make the person he's hunting after an interesting character. But um, so he's following around Jamie Lee Curtis. Fucking with her, you get great suspense scenes where she's in her house and she looks out the window and fucking Michael Myers is just like standing outside and with laundry, little sheets hung up, for like flapping around. When he's just fucking standing there. Now once he disappears, he's like a phantom type character who can like reappear and disappear at will, pretty much. Which adds a great supernatural Halloween element to him. And an already great movie. So uh, the suspense, yeah, like I said, is terrific in this film. And you get a scene where uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is walking home from school, and she's got uh, Linda and Annie with her. Uh, and they're walking home from school, and uh, Michael Myers like pops out from behind a bush, and then the, they go back there, and he's fucking vanished. Some good suspense right there, and you get some other suspense like Jamie Lee Curtis's character Lori babysits this kid in the movie named Tommy Doyle, um, who would later come back in Halloween Six, played by Paul Rudd <laughs> of all people. But uh, she babysits him, and you get a creepy scene here where like he's at school and he's getting picked on, and he fucking he's like walking, and Michael Myers is like stalking him in his car. He's like he's like following. He's just like walking behind the school, the gate of the school or fence or whatever. No gate. Yeah, he's walking and just like looking at the <laughs> looking at fucking Tommy walking, and it's like real creepy. And <laughs> You get a scene where one of the kids is picking on him, like, runs away, and Michael Myers, like, grabs him all at once and then lets him go, and he's like, oh, shit, <laughs> great little jump. I mean, I would probably shit myself, honestly, if that motherfucker would grab me, and I was that, I was that age, but uh, it's terrific uh, film scenes in this film, uh, suspense-wise and horror-wise, like, slashing-wise, the kills are filmed good, um, but, um, you know, uh, 
you, yeah, you get a lot of great suspense still with the Tommy Doyle scene and all that shit. Um, and later on in the movie, pretty much, the characters are average teenagers. Laura Strode's more of the bookish uh, girl who doesn't like to go on dates or doesn't want to and babysits a lot, but she still smokes weed, so she violates that. <laughs> uh, um, violates that cardinal rule. No weed smoking in a slasher film, but... <laughs> But anyway, um, so she's pretty. She's the most likable of her her friends. Annie's okay. Uh, Linda's annoying as fuck with her dialogue. So um, you get to the night when uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is babysitting the the kid. I mean Tommy. Um, and you get really wonderful stuff where Tommy looks out the window all the time. Michael Myers is like standing there staring, and it's like he's like Lori, the boogeyman's outside. And she keeps going, Tommy. Shut the fuck up, basically. There ain't nobody else. <laughs> well, she don't say shut the fuck up, but she might as well. Because she keeps trying to reassure him there ain't nobody out there, man. <laughs> but uh, it's to, it's really great how they play it up. Like Michael Myers is a phantom type, phantom type figure is played up terrific in this movie. So much better than the the way he plays played up in Rob Zombie's movie. Where he's pretty much just like a hillbilly looking guy who just goes around slaughtering. Uh, oh, <laughs> very violently. But uh... We'll get to that movie uh, after a long line of sequels. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, you get the little uh, more little suspense uh, where yeah, Tommy's like looking out the window and seeing Michael Myers like standing around all the time. Uh, this film, like I've said, is much more of a suspense film. Uh, and if you're used to like more hack and slash and don't really care too much about suspense stuff like that, and you you've only seen the sequels to this movie where Michael Myers is more like in your face and just hacking, and you watch this movie, you may be disappointed. But if you know what you're getting into with this movie and know what kind of movie it is, then, um, or at least have some idea that this movie is more of a suspense, urban legend feel type movie, Halloween themed, um, then I think that you'll, you'll love this movie like I did. And especially if you're a, a person who well, likes good horror movies in general. I mean, I'm not saying if you don't like this movie, there's something wrong with you or nothing. But uh, I mean, this movie I do think is a great film. And I really don't see how anyone can not enjoy it who's a horror fan. But um, that's besides the point here. Back to the story. So Michael Myers has been stalking Jamie Lee Curtis for a while. Just like walking around appearing in her backyard and stuff. And she gets freaked out by it. And then he starts stalking uh, her friend Annie. And just like fucking with her. And, but uh, Annie's babysitting for this girl named Lindsay Wallace. And she's watching the, like a horror movie marathon. And the fucking thing's on. Or thing from another world. I don't remember what the original was called exactly. But. Uh, which John Carpenter would go on to remake, which is another film of his I like. Um, and he's like fucking around in her house, and you get more of him like Michael Myers just standing in the background in the shadows, and it looks really cool. Um, but they got a dog there, like a German Shepherd. Michael Myers kills it, and like, oh shit, he even killed the dog. This guy ain't fucking around. Because <laughs> animals seem more safe in horror movies than people do most of the time. But, uh, he kills the dog there. Um, Annie goes outside, she's looking around. Um, she takes uh, Lindsay Wallace. Uh, later, she takes Lindsay, Lala, Lindsay Wallace. Fucking, I have trouble saying her name. Over to uh, Laura's house because she's got like a little crush on Tommy Doyle, I believe. And they're sitting over there watching the horror movie marathon together. And Annie heads out of there. I think she's gonna meet up with her her boyfriend. She goes out to the car. Michael Myers just fucking boom pops up in the back seat, and I, he starts strangling the shit out of her. And then I think he cuts her with a knife. I'm not too clear here. You don't see any blood. This movie has uh, plays the more of the less is more effect here, and it, it's good. This is the only the death scene I'm a little uh, on because he slices her with the knife, and I don't even know where he cut her exactly. It may have been the throat, but uh, I'm not even really sure because it happened so quick. But uh, the suspense and everything for the scene is so terrific that I just I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> but um, so she's dead. Um. Uh, Linda and her boyfriend fucking arrive there at the house. Uh, they go in there, and of course, what they want to do automatically is fuck. Linda says totally like another 50,000 fucking times. And I'm like, oh gosh, fucking die already, please. And she, she gets in there. They're fucking, they go upstairs and fuck some more. And uh, <laughs> her boyfriend wants to go downstairs and get something to drink because he's, you know, squeezed one off and now he's thirsty. So he comes downstairs to get a beer. And uh, one thing I love about the character of Michael Myers is he likes to fuck with his victims, which I find pretty damn funny. Uh, he goes downstairs to get a beer. Michael Myers surprises him with a jump, stabs him, pins him to the wall, and gives like the little head tilt like that. 
which has played really good. Um, he stabs him, pins him to the wall. Great death scene. Probably my favorite of the movie. So he's fucking pinned to the wall. Uh, and then you get the most the, the, the funny scene that I think is a little funny with Michael Myers with a sheet over his head. Wearing the dude's glasses like with eye holes cut out in the sheet. Which I thought was kind of funny. But it's really creepy too at the same time. Because he's fucking with Linda. Trying to pretend to be her boyfriend. And he she's sitting there talking to him. And she's like thinks it's her boyfriend. She's like where my beer? <laughs> she gets on the phone. And she's going to call up uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. So she can find out where Annie is. And he fucking comes up behind her and strangles her while she's on the phone. And I like this death scene. It's played up really well too. And the actress despite her shitty dialogue. I think does a decent job here. And dying. <laughs> So he strangles the fuck out of her. She's dead. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis decides to go over there and check things out and see what's going on finally. Uh, she heads over there and she discovers the dead bodies. The dead body finding here is very reminiscent of Friday 13th. Or I would say Friday 13th is very reminiscent of this film since they copied this film a little bit for Friday 13th. At least the formula. But this film takes stuff from some other films. I, th I think it takes a little bit from Psycho. But uh, all horror films do that in films in general. So I don't really have a problem with that as long as it's not a... Uh, complete direct copy um or as long as there's enough in them where they do their own thing which i think friday 13th has but um so she comes over there discovers the bodies and everything and the fucking tombstone or the <laughs> dead sister at the beginning of the movie uh is what was uh michael myers stole it from the graveyard it's fucking there on the bed with andy's corpse like laid out in some kind of like traditional sacrificial way a little bit looks like it and uh, it's really creepy, and the tombstone's above her head. And like I said, I love like the urban legend, Halloween, creepy story vibe to this movie. And uh, that's a terrific scene where her body just laying there in the fucking tombstone behind her. I really like that. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis sees that. She finds the other bodies. Um, she fucking freaks out. Michael Myers comes up behind her. Smith's scene. Uh, slices the, her shoulder. She falls down the stairs. And this is when you get to the final, of where it becomes more hack and slash, and the... Uh, more traditional of Michael Myers chasing after the, the victim, like you'd get in uh, most slashers through the entire movie. But here, because of the amazing buildup we've had for the first two acts, and even the third act up until this final here, uh, it's totally worth it. It doesn't hurt the film at all. I mean, it's fine that it goes from suspense to more of hack and slash. I don't have a problem with it at all. And it plays into it great. It's like a real treat after all the buildup of the rest of the movie. But, uh, so he's chasing after Jamie Lee Curtis. He comes down the stairs, coming after. Only this film has a terrific score. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I forgot, almost forgot to mention the score. But everybody who's a horror fan has already seen this movie and knows the score, and it's terrific. And it would work for any horror film, no matter what it was. But the score for this film is fucking amazing, and it really plays with the character uh, terrifically. And Jamie Lee Curtis is running. You got that badass score playing in the background. She takes off. Uh, uh, and you get great suspense here, where she. Is like screaming her head off and makes it over to the to the ha to her house. She's trying to get in. Fucking Michael Myers is like power walking towards her. And the little kids open the door and she finally gets in. And <laughs> the little kids, of course, see Michael Myers and like it's the boogeyman. It's the boogeyman. Uh, Michael Myers pops up from behind the couch. Uh, she stabs him with a knitting needle, I believe, uh, like in the fucking side of the neck, I think. And he falls down and you know he's not dead, obviously, uh, if you've seen more than one horror movie. Fucking, he pops up. She takes off. Uh, they head upstairs. Uh, she, she gets uh, she gets the kids to hide. She hides in the closet of all places. Uh, Michael Myers busts into the closet pretty easily. He doesn't really look like a very tough closet to get into for anybody, really. Michael Myers busts through the closet. She stabs him with a coat hanger in the eye, which I'm like, eh, like a little coat hanger, but a coat hanger in the eye would hurt like fuck. And I'm like, she's got some pretty good aim for hitting him directly in the eyeball in the dark, but, uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't hurt the film, so she stabs him, he drops the knife, she stabs the shit out of him, and then you, uh, you get, uh, one of the best, uh, scenes, and I would say, in a lot of movies, where it's filmed so good, where, uh, fucking, Michael Myers just raises up in the background and, like, turns his head directly towards her, and it's played really good, and there's no sound or anything when he does it, and it's, it's fantastically done. All, all through the movie, you get Donald Pleasance, like, looking for Michael Myers, trying to figure out where the fuck he is. And he get great scenes where he's just, like, talking to the sheriff, trying to find out where he's at. And Michael Myers just, like, actually drives by him in the background. I love that. Like, he's so sneaky, they don't even notice him because he's just casually blending in. I like that shit like that. But, um, so the kids run outside screaming, uh, heading over to the neighbor's house. Donald Pleasance is outside. He, he sees them. 
he decides to go in uh, to the house that they ran out of because he figures it's probably fucking Michael Myers. Because a little bit before that, he seen the car from the he seen the car that Michael Myers stole, just like sitting around. Um, so he knows that he's in the neighborhood. And he heads in the house, jerks out his weapon. He's getting ready to blow Michael Myers' ass away. Um, they, he, uh, Michael Myers is struggling with Jamie Lee Curtis. She manages to tear off his mask. And then uh, Don Pleasance, uh, well, I'll just call him Dr. Loomis, instead of his real name. That's his character name. He shoots him. Uh, Michael Myers uh, flies backwards. But you get Michael Myers. Uh, I mean, well, Jamie Lee Curtis takes his mask off. And you see his face for a brief uh, second. And I'm like, that kind of demystifies him a little bit. because Well, it, you get all the build up and the suspense in the movie, and uh, he's played as more of like a more of like a figure and not an actual person, um, where you can kind of like suppress your own ideas and stuff into. And then when you actually see his face, it makes him more of like a human person. You kind of start thinking, well, is this just a crazy guy? I'll just for a brief second, uh, but uh, I feel that's just my personal taste. I mean, all the build up in the movie you get. It's kind of like a little payoff where you finally get to see his face, but I don't really think you needed it. I would have been happier if you just never saw his face. It just kind of demystifies him a little bit, but not to the point of hurting the film in any way. And then, uh, well, after that, uh, Don Pleasance, well, Dr. Loomis, almost time Don Pleasance again, walks in there and fucking blasts him away. He falls uh, off the balcony of the house, lands down in the fucking grass. Um, then you get <laughs> the greatest dialogue ever in a horror film. Where Jamie Lee Curtis is like, it was the boogeyman. Don Pleasance is like, I fucking did it again. <laughs> Alright, I almost think to call him Don Pleasance since everybody's seen this movie and they know what his character's name is. And Don Pleasance is like, as a matter of fact, I do believe it was. <laughs> You're like, oh shit. <laughs> and he walks out there and you get the greatest ending for uh, a horror film. Well, I would say this is probably in the top three greatest endings for our, a slasher film where Donald Pleasance looks down there and fucking Michael Myers just bam vanished and then uh, all you hear is like Michael Myers is breathing and not once cue bam movie's over I would have been fine with just like a little uh like a uh, words popped up with like uh, where it's talking about like the incident and everything that says that Michael Myers was never seen again making him more of like a figment and like he's still out there and he was never seen or heard from again I would have liked that better and just ended the this franchise here with no sequels, but uh we did get we did get sequels anyway, so it doesn't really matter what I would have liked because either way I didn't get what I wanted. But uh you could have just never made a sequel to this movie. It ends perfectly. It's like a little urban legend tale of a babysitter being attacked one night and the killer's still out there and never seen again. But um it's a terrific film. Obviously four out of four stars. Ain't no point. And uh. Wait until the end of the video to say it. It's obviously a 4 out of 4 stars. I shouldn't even wait this long to say it. Uh, there's not really much more I can say about this film. John Carpenter does a great job directing. Uh, you can, you can, well, the difference between this and Takes a Chainsaw Massacre is Tobe Hooper is more like accidental director of that film. The reason it turned out so good was more of an accident, I mean, and less his skill. And for this film, you can tell John Carpenter has skill as a director. And especially with his other films, you can tell that he has skill and he just wasn't like a one-hit wonder. Uh, but this film is wonderfully directed. It's wonderfully scored. The actors in the film, the girl who plays Annie and the girl who plays Linda, I believe it's PJ Souls. Uh, she does fine. I mean, she does no better or worse than other uh, actors in horror films I've seen, really. Well, well, she does do better than some of the other ones I've seen. But, uh, I mean, as far as, like, the good ones that I've seen, like other slasher films, other good ones, she does, she does decent. She does fine. It's just her dialogue is fucking horrible totally all the time. I don't know why that's in there. But uh, the girl who plays Annie, she's decent. She's fine. Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance are the standouts. And the guy who plays Michael Myers, he does great. <laughs> just like his movements and everything. And Michael Myers' character is creepy. Like just standing there in the shadows, not even moving or doing anything. Just stalking people, which he does for most of the film. That's what's so great about this film is it's structured so fucking well that Michael Myers can just be standing there doing nothing and just staring at somebody. And it's still fucking creepy as shit and entertaining. Which the other sequels chose to make him more of just like a brutal killer. And took away from the suspense and creepy factor and the phantom factor they had in this movie. But uh, this is a terrific film. I love this movie. I'll probably watch it again on Halloween. Uh, this is easily the best uh, uh, horror film uh, I've reviewed so far, period. And the best slasher film I've reviewed so far, period. 
uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes strong second place, the original one. Um, I'm looking forward to the second one because I remember liking it as well, but not as much as this one, even though I still don't think that there need to be any sequels to this movie. I'm still looking forward to seeing the second one um, anyway because I remember it being pretty decent. But um, it's a terrific film. Donald Pleasance is great. I wish he would have got to do a little bit more, but we get all the sequels for that, so it doesn't. I don't really give a fuck about that, to be honest, <laughs> as much as I would have if this had been the only film in the franchise. But uh, he does terrific for what he's doing. Um, well, he's more of like, well, for the Michael Myers character, you, you're scared of him really before you even see him do anything, because Donald Pleasance has terrific speeches in the movie where he talks about how evil Michael Myers is and how pure evil he is, and he gives a speech about Michael Myers having the devil's eyes and stuff, and it's really fucking uh, intense and creepy, and Donald Pleasance's line delivery is amazing, which is why I wanted to see more of him. Um. But yeah, he makes Michael Myers sound really fucking intimidating and scary even before you even get to see him do anything. So I love that, the fact that the characters build up so well that even before he strikes and kills somebody, you're already thinking, oh shit, I don't want to fuck with this guy. <laughs> it works so well in this film. The dialogue from Donald Pleasance does. In the sequels, it becomes more irritating because he's still, he's like, kind of seems like whining because he's just talking about it constantly in the later films. But here, it's terrific. Uh, but this is a great. This is, I mean, this is a great film. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis does really good. Donald Pleasance does good. Donald Pleasance's acting is I believe, is better than Jamie Lee Curtis's. I think in this film, um, but Jamie Lee Curtis's acting is still really good, and, and uh, her and Donald Pleasance are the standouts. But yeah, this is a terrific film. Four out of four stars, and I am really excited to watch the sequel. Not so much the sequels after the second one, but I haven't seen them in a long time, so I remember liking Part Four a lot too. So I'll be ready to check those out too. So this is a great, this is, well, not a great, this is an amazing film. Not just an amazing horror film or slasher film, but an amazing film in general. Um, I'll see you guys again with Halloween 2. And the, uh, I recommend you horror fans out there, just people who want to watch a scary film on Halloween, definitely rent the original Halloween and not the Rob Zombie remake, even though I don't hate that one. Um, this is definitely the film you need to watch on Halloween. <laughs> Hence the title, Halloween. <laughs> I would say this film and uh, Creep Show and Trick or Treat are the three films I always watch every year on Halloween. But uh, I'll see you guys again with a Halloween 2 review. And I love this film. It's a classic. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching the sequel. And I hope you guys have, ha I hope you guys have a good Halloween <laughs> when... Uh, I mean, when you when we have Halloween, I mean it's not Halloween yet. I'm fucking saying I hope you guys do have a good Halloween, and um, definitely recommend you watch this film on Halloween. I'll uh, I'll see you guys again with another review, and I hope you have a great day.